Hi, I'm Dr. Adeline Tang from University of Malaysia, Sabah. This video clip is to explain Unit 3 Business Opportunity for the course Fundamentals of Entrepreneurial Acculturation. In Chapter 3, students need to know a few things. First, they need to recognize the situation that contribute to the business opportunities. Second, to identify the business opportunities. Third, to evaluate and choose business opportunities that are suitable to do. And last, understand how to create business opportunity. So first of all, we need to know what do we mean by the term opportunity. Yeah? Opportunity is a favorable set of circumstances that create the need for a new product, service or business idea. So when we say opportunity, it refers to the improvement Okay, improvement or enhance the business ability to solve their own problems or to improve the services, the products of the business. So not only new company needed opportunity, even the company already exists in the market. Also, they need to always look for new opportunity in the market. So let's look at some of the examples of business opportunity here. Here, first is Asia. They find an opportunity by providing affordable and cheap air ticket to the customers to travel. And when other airlines company are offering expensive prices, they can offer affordable prices to the customer. While for Food Panda, same thing, they can offer food and drink delivery service to the customers who have very PC schedule so it allowed the customers to enjoy good food even though they are not going out or they can't don't have time to cook the food themselves so next we are looking at how to identify business opportunity there are three ways to identify the business opportunity first is by observing trends what are the trends that happening now Second is to solve the problems that facing by the customers or the consumers and trying to uh, help the consumer to get better or more convenient. And last, finding the gaps in the market and trying to solve or provide the customers with the product that they want. So when we look at the first approach, observe trends, you can observe the trend in terms of political or regulational changes. So sometimes when there are changes in the politic, new regulations such as new SOP during the pandemic, then might create business opportunity for certain group companies or businesses. For example, company that provide cleaning services, company that provide certain types of product. Same thing, when the economy changes, when consumer have more better income during a good economy condition, then consumer are willing to spend more on good quality product, expensive product. So this might create an opportunity for us to sell expensive product. Okay, while the social changes also might affect the demand of consumer. When we are facing a more and more and more elder population, okay, then we might think of what are the products that needed by this group of consumer. For example, they might need uh, healthcare services, they might need a uh, doctor consultation kind of services. So, how can we provide this sort of services to the elder population? And last, it might be the changes in the technology. When we have new technology, it allows us to find new business opportunity. For example, with new technology of GPS technology that allow companies like GrabCar, Foodpanda to provide their services to the consumer. So when we observe the trends happening now, then we have to think of what can we do? What are the opportunity for business? For selling product or services, then we think of what other product or services then we can sell to the customer. Next, we are looking at the second approach. The second approach is by first identifying the problems. What are the problems that 
facing by the consumer and we are finding a way to solve the problems of the consumer so this problem can be pinpointed through observing the trend and through more simple means such as intuition some, sometimes you call it sixth sense or just by chance you know consumers are facing this sort of problems then i'm helping them to solve their problems okay and the third approach that you can find is by finding the gaps in the marketplace when we use the term gaps gaps refers to a specific smaller group of consumer that who require different type of products they might be uh, very small so big companies might not interested to sell to this group of consumer so small company might be interested to sell to this group of consumer so for example consumers who prefer vegetarian product vegetarian food so because there are this group of consumers available so we can find vegetarian restaurant in kk so although this group of consumer very small but we can find the company or the businesses are provide this kind of services to the group of consumer next we are looking at what are the procedures to create business opportunity so when we have identified the opportunities so it means that we already have the business idea so have the ideas is the first step in creating the business opportunity after that we need to validate and segment the market according to the ideas and we need to know what product we want to sell for different segment of consumer and next we determine what are the capital and budget needed to provide that service and after that we determine or we create the product and services for sale and finally we have our marketing mix which included product price promotion and praise so we will look at this uh, procedure one by one huh? so first we are looking at the idea generation a good idea should be able to solve the problems that facing by consumer and next a good idea should be able to add value to the product or services provided to the consumer so when we look at here the product available in the market might not able to fulfill the demand or preference of consumers okay it might due to low quality poor performance product not user friendly unreasonable price all these might create problems in the market so that's why we need a new product that will help uh, to add value value to the customers so customer will be happy with our product or services next customer might require a product to help them to solve, solve certain problems for example computer software that help us to work from home during the pandemic okay or other kind of uh, services that we need to help us to work from home during the pandemic so this kind of problems that we face can be solved by creating new product or new services after we have the idea then we have to validate whether the idea is suitable or not so idea validation is to confirm whether the business idea are valid are suitable for the consumer before we even start to sell the product so because of that we need to do some survey so we need to ask respondent we need to know who are the customers who are going to use our product How about gender email occupation uh, product reference income level so we need to do a survey about that idea first we ask customer whether they want to to buy the product to get their feedback and this feedback is so so important so so important to improve and develop further our products and sometimes we come up with a product trial to try out the product before we even sell it out so after we validate our product and at the same time we need to do market segment we have to determine which market is the most suitable for us to sell the product so when we talk about market segmentation meaning that we have to find out which group of consumers 
uh, we want to sell to them we can do market segment either based on demography that means some uh, factors like such as uh, age gender okay and uh, also we can base on the economy status social economy status for example economy education level income uh, level so if they have higher income they can afford for better quality product next the geographical factor and last the psychology for example the values what are the things that they think important what are the lifestyle living lifestyle that they prefer so based on one or more of this factor we determine the market segment we want to sell to and after we determine the market segment then next step is we have to determine how much capital we need to produce the product so the capital and the budgeting is the next thing that we have to prepare okay so first we need to know how much capital we need so when we determine the capital we have to find out a source of capital how much money we we can get from where can we get our capital most of the time when we start new business we get this from our family and friends or our own saving next we will do a budget budget of what how much i need to pay for promotion creating the product and so on so this budget is so so important we have to do it before we even create the product and after that we start to allocate the capital into the business operation so we if we have a higher capital then we can put more into promotion we can put more into product development we can put more into uh preparing the the product for sale so all these are depending on how much money we can have we have to do the project or to start the business next we have to estimate the what are the other expenses that we need to pay when we start our business so after we have the budgeting we have uh, the allocation of money to develop the product now is the time for us to create the product the product can be any type of product or we call create services for product sometimes we come together product and services will come together so we provide product with services to the customers when we talk about product and services we always remember that we have to do markup okay we have to do mark mark up of the product so we need to know what is the cost to produce the product then after that we do the markup so sometimes we have higher percentage sometimes we have lower percentage of markup so how much is the percentage of markup Deter depend on the product or the services okay you will see that markup here is quite high because this markup is the markup based on the cost of the raw material most of the time eh? so in this 30 percent of uh, cost uh, markup of the cost then we still need to cover some of the costs like management costs electricity promotion and other type of costs okay so we have to mark up based on the nature of the business so you can see for example the the the, for a business restaurant who are selling cakes okay? so they for this tiramisu cake the price of the cake is uh, 2 ringgit and 80 cents so they might want to mark up 40 percent and then from here they might add on another labor cost to sell but the profit might not be that high when we sell this out huh? remember we might have other type of cost that we have to pay so when we mark all this up, our selling price might be five ringgit. Okay, selling price might be five ringgit. So this mark up cost we need to pay for the other. Uh, we need to mark up, okay, because we need to pay for the other type of cost. Okay, this is another marking up. Okay, you may mark up lower, plus another profit to get the sales prices so when we do markup remember we need to do costing first so this is one example to do costing so you total up the cost to produce one unit and after that only you do the markup if you don't total up the cost of every raw material you might not able to do the right markup 
Okay, this is another one. Okay, you can have a look. And this slide will show you how to calculate cost per unit. Let's say you have Milo, okay, egg, and cup. So for Milo, the cost price is 18 ringgit for 2 kilo. So you need to know how much, how many serving you can prepare or how many cup of Milo you can prepare with just 2 kilo of Milo. So with that, you can calculate the cost per unit. Same thing for the egg. The cost price might be 4 ringgit per tray. So one tray is uh, 10 pieces. So you know that for every one pieces, you need to pay 40 cents so this is the cost per unit and same thing with the cup so with that we can calculate the cost to prepare a cup of drink for example so next we are looking at the break even analysis break even analysis or in short we call it PE analysis is very important it is used to calculate the minimum sales amount either in unit or revenue that you must you must sell to cover the total cost okay so the minimum of the products to sell is calculated to avoid you are facing any cost any loss in the process of selling so at the break even point we, the company will face no loss but also enjoy no profit so when you look at this okay the this line upper line actually is the line representing sales okay and the line here is the line represent cost so when the cost is higher than the sales of course you are facing loss so when at this point, you are reaching what we call break-even point. So we have to calculate what is the quantity at this point. So let's say the quantity is 100 unit. It means that you must sell up to 100 unit, 100 unit to avoid facing loss. Any quantity more than the 100 unit means that you are enjoying profit. So the higher you sell, the higher profit you enjoy. So there is one way to calculate your cost is by calculation rather than graphic is using break even point equal to fixed cost divided by price minus variable cost. Let's look at one example here. Let's say for this, you have a total cost of 40,000, fixed cost of 25,000 and total sales of 60,000. Let's say I'm doing uh, using this cost, the cost of product to produce 5,000 pieces of bottles. 5,000 pieces of bottle. So first of all, I need to know what is the price per bottle. Okay, price per bottle. So the price per bottle is 12 bottle, uh, 12 ringgit per bottle. And beside that, I need to know the variable cost per bottle. So the variable cost per bottle is 3 ringgit per bottle clearing it for each bottle so with this information then i can calculate the break even point so by taking the fixed cost divide by the price minus variable cost then i will get 2778 units so these are the quantity that the company must sell to avoid making loss any quantity more than this we allow the company to enjoy profit all right so after this we are looking at another subtopic that is seo marketing and google trend so first of all we need to know what do you mean by seo so seo is search engine optimization seo so when we say seo you have to bear in mind this is related to your what you learn about a uh, search serving a uh, searching engine. Huh? So when we say searching engine, we are referring to like a uh, Google. So now everybody is uh, looking uh, at Google for uh, answer to their questions. Huh? Sometimes when you do your assignment, you also look for Google for your um, answer. So when we are uh, we call it SEO because this is one of the ways to optimize you what you can do on your website. 
For example, you determine what are the keywords, what are the content and lay out in your own website so that your website is list in the first page of the search in engine index. For example, when people want to search in the search engine, they will use certain terms. So if your website contains this type of terms or information, then your website will come out on the first page. So make it easier for customers to buy or to look at your product and to buy your product so what is the objective of search engine optimization first is to position the company product or service or website at the top of the searching list okay when you open your google when you start to search it should be the on the first page okay second is it will help us to optimize the search result organically meaning that we are not paying for the search now when you open the google page when you search something you will see there are some paid advertisement okay on top and after the paid advertisement there are some other page that is not paid for so we are going we are using this to avoid uh, to avoid paying for the advertisement and to but at the same time allow consumer to look at our product or company easier so why using search engine first it actually help us to validate our idea okay so you can when you have certain product for sale you can search in the google to try to find out whether this product is something that people are selling or not and are you selling a similar product with other custom other businesses or your pro are your product very unique as compared to other uh, businesses Second, we are using this to help to increase the brand awareness so people are heard of your brand. Okay, when they search or they see, oh, this is the brand of the product, so they will hear your name or know your brand. Analyze the strategy. Okay, strategy that used by your competitors. How what strategy they use and determine what strategy can I use to promote my product. Gather customer information, customer data and drive traffic drive traffic means that we need to get more customer to look at our page okay we when there are more and more customer looking at our page then it means that it will help us to to sell more okay when the the product turn out to be on the first page of the search engine then easier for customer to to look at it and it allowed customer to get more information about our, our product so that's why we use search engine optimization besides that you another thing that you must know is uh, the term google trend okay google trend what do you mean by google trend google trend is um analysis of the keywords by google okay search engine google so by looking at the google trend you it actually suggest suggest to you whether this popular a product is popular or not okay so what are the keywords that you can use in your website okay what are the keywords that you can use in your website so this is uh, for example you can uh, search for google trends Okay, just search for Google Trends and in the Google Trends, you can search any type of products. Okay, when you search the product, for example, hijab, when you search the product hijab, then it will show you uh, the trend of searching. Then it will show that certain period of time uh, will have higher search. Okay, and then you, you can analyze yourself. Is this because uh, during Sebelum Hari Raya, okay, when before Hari Raya, then people will have a higher search for uh, hijab, for example. And then you also can compare one term with another term, similar term, for example, hijab, dudung, juba, and other similar terms. Then you compare uh, which term is more popular. So when you compare, you will find that, okay, people prefer to use the word dudung rather than hijab, okay, for, for, for when they are doing the searching. So when you do the searching, then it will help you. Okay, the Google Trend will help you to to identify the best term you can use in your website. 
and to tell you also when is the best time that people uh, or common time that people do the searching okay and you also can compare between areas the place people searching for example which uh, state always search online okay for example Trenkonu has the highest okay as compared to other states or you can even compare with smaller areas so sub-region eh? sub-region or even city you can compare the city or the state so if you allow you to identify which area you have more customers for example you might have more customers in the west malaysia rather than sapa and sarawak so these are some of the important things that google trend can tell you that where is your customers then um, and besides you also can can compare what are the different uh, terms that people use when they they do searching uh. for example uh, nirofa hijab this is another terms that they always use malay hijab okay uh, hijab for girl okay so these are some of the terms that people always use so you know that uh, you should use this type of terms like Malay hijab for example when you are doing the search so besides that uh, in Google you have another they call it keyword planner but keyword planner is something that sometimes uh, only for business okay only for businesses so you they will tell you what other uh, trend for that product when you do the searching Okay, so you can try out using your Google to search the product that you interest to sell to see that whether people like to search this product online or not. And then what are the terms that they use online? So by knowing what are the terms that people always use to search, we help you to determine what are the terms that you have to write in your own, in your own website. Okay, beside that, it also help you to determine what are the products that you can sell in certain area okay so so what happened is you have to create a profile let's look at activity two okay you have to create a profile on go e-commerce website and i will share with you the step to do the registration uh, step by step right so Okay, that's all for the unit 3. Thank you for listening and please complete your assignment this week. Huh? That is to create your, your Go e-commerce profile okay, in the website. Thank you so much.